Elon Musk, the new owner of the social media giant Twitter, oh, no. sending out a tweet that Stupid. included a conspiracy theory about the attack on Paul Pelosi. They're stealing Ukrainian children. 500 just Yo. yesterday were shipped to Russia. And you and this is why we should be supporting them. We cannot allow this kind of evil to go unchecked just on a basic Yo. moral reason. I mean, don't you agree with that? I I'm sorry, I don't. And here's okay, why. why. Why? Takeoff apparently wasn't even doing anything. I don't even think he was, like, meant to be shot at. Um, one of the guys, uh, apparently, there are some mob people there. We begin tonight with the brutal attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi. Authorities speaking just moments ago, and tonight the attacker now charged with attempted murder, as well as federal charges tonight. There are also chilling new details from the federal affidavit, what the suspect told them he intended to do, saying Speaker Pelosi was his target, saying he hoped to send a message to other members of Congress. The assailant saying he broke in through a glass door, finding Paul Pelosi sleeping, demanding to talk to Nancy. The suspect had a hammer, zip ties, and tape. After surgery to repair his skull, we have learned that 82-year-old Paul Pelosi had more surgery over the weekend. He has now spoken to investigators, and tonight there are calls from leaders of both parties, Republicans and Democrats, urging lawmakers to tone down the rhetoric. ABC's Mola Lenghi leading us off from San Francisco. Tonight, federal authorities detailing a shocking, politically motivated hammer attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul, that fractured his skull. According to the affidavit, 42-year-old David DePap telling police that he was going to hold Nancy hostage and talk to her. And if she lied, he was going to break her kneecaps. The Pap allegedly Christ. describing the speaker as the, quote, leader of the pack of what he said were lies told by the Democratic Party. De Pap also later explained that by breaking Nancy's kneecaps, she would then have to be wheeled into Congress, which would show other members of Congress there were consequences to actions. De Pap now facing federal charges of assault on an immediate family member of a federal official and attempted kidnapping of a federal official. And late today in San Francisco, authorities here announcing additional charges. The charges that we are filing today include attempted murder, residential burglary, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, false imprisonment of an elder, as well as threats to a public official and their family. The federal affidavit claiming DePap told police that he broke into the house through a glass door early Friday. DePap stated that Pelosi was in bed and appeared surprised adding he told Pelosi to wake up and that he was looking for Nancy. Moments later, at 2.23 a.m., according to the affidavit, Pelosi was able to go into the bathroom, which is when he was able to call 911. We asked the district attorney about that call. How significant was it that Mr. Pelosi was able to get away for that moment and call 911? Um, I truly believe, based on what I know, that it was life-saving. According to the affidavit, DePap had zip ties, tape, rope, and at least one hammer with him that morning. The evidence further shows that DePap assaulted Mr. Pelosi with DePap's own hammer. When the police uh, responded that the front door was opened, um, both men were holding on to one end of the hammer. There was an order to drop the, web, drop the hammer once the police realized what they were holding. Um, the suspect then pulled it away, and that's when he attacked him with it. And DePap's question to Paul Pelosi, according to sources, where's Nancy? Eerily similar to the chants made by the mob that attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Nancy! Oh, Nancy! Political leaders on both sides of the aisle condemning the attack. Former Vice President Mike Pence, who was in the Capitol on January 6th, along with Speaker Pelosi, tweeting, This is an outrage, and there can be no tolerance for violence against public officials or their families. This man should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeting he's horrified and disgusted, adding he's grateful to hear that Paul is on track to make a full recovery. And President Biden. But you can't condemn the violence unless you condemn those people who continue to argue the election was not real, that it's being stolen, that all the, all the malarkey that's being put out there. Malarkey? True! Tonight, authorities investigating social media posts they increasingly believe the suspect made, including wide-ranging, unfounded conspiracy theories, including the false claim that Biden lost the 2020 election. Within hours on social media amid the news of the attack, authorities warning they were already seeing posts applauding the attack. 
And Elon Musk, the new owner of the social media giant Twitter, oh, no. sending out a tweet that Stupid. included a conspiracy theory about the attack on Paul Pelosi. What a the tweet moron. taken down hours later without an apology or explanation. Though critics say, what was he? What was his? What was that fucking shit? I feel like I only read a synopsis of it. That like they had actually called a sex worker to their house and it went wrong. That was like the theory that he was tweeting about. Image was already done, having sent it out to his 112 million followers. We should be able to all engage. Gay lover, yeah, Jesus. In passionate political discourse, but still remain respectful of one another. Violence certainly has no place in San Francisco or in politics. Well, the San Francisco District Attorney just completed her press conference here at her office where she announced those state charges. Meanwhile, Paul Pelosi remains at the ICU recovering from surgery. Speaker Pelosi says his condition continues to improve. Enough so, David, that he has been able to speak to investigators and provide at least some details about the break-in and the subsequent attack. They're stealing Ukrainian children. 500 just Yo. yesterday were shipped to Russia. And you and this is why we should be supporting them. We cannot allow this kind of evil to go unchecked just on a basic Yo. moral reason. I mean, don't you agree with that? I, I'm sorry, I don't. And here's okay, why. why. Why? There are gangs that have overtaken Haiti. There is a cholera pandemic that was started by the UN. UN members. Is that true? Raped Haitians. A third of Pakistan was underwater. Should we go do the- do, do, <laughs> What is that? What are we, are we supposed to fix everything? Cl the climate crisis. Should we go and invade China because Uyghurs are in concentration camps? Tell me, tell me, articulate. This is the question that I asked Matt Dust when this war first started. Until you can articulate to me what the rationale is behind where America intervenes and where it doesn't, and give me some kind of moral accounting that makes me believe that it's actually about moral commitment and realizing how much of our money and our resources in the richest country in the world can go to saving lives and increasing the quality of life for the most people, as opposed to a a strategic military intervention mm -hmm. for territory, resources and political control if you can articulate to me why this is truly the most deserving humanitarian case on the planet as opposed to a continuation of these coal war policies we want our economic Cold, system our the oppressive fuck? by the way economic system to maintain global dominance then i can start to entertain a conversation about what our intervention should be how long and how much but there is nowhere in the entire public sphere that that conversation is actually happening and nowhere close to a rationalization that's been presented. Damn, she posted this thinking she looks good here. Oh, I guess she probably does to her audience, huh? Jesus. I don't understand. Is the criticism that the U.S. government doesn't care about non-white crisis? The, criti the problem, the big problem rests on having this childlike understanding of the world, that things are either good or they're strategic. That if people are acting in ways that are geopolitically strategic, they must not be acting in ways that are good, which is stupid. It's a childlike understanding of politics. Obviously, there is some strategic interest in Ukraine, but one can argue that that strategic interest is born out of our um, desire to, quote unquote, do good across Europe, right? Which I think to some extent, at least so far as Ukraine is concerned, is pretty defensible. Um, we, we want Europe to be a place where people aren't invading other people. Ukraine is getting invaded. Therefore, we help Ukraine. Like, there is geopolitical interest there. There's also peacekeeping interest across Europe, which is true. Like, you can't just say that, like, well, you've got some geostrategic interest. Therefore, it's all bad. That's not true. Um, if you want to claim that we ought to help, like, Haiti and stuff, too, that's fine. That's a, that's a decent claim. But you can't say, like, we stop all of our help across the world until we, like, remedy every wrongdoing that us or the United Nations has done. Like, that's insane. People on bandwagons can't handle when you ask where their moral outrages for less popular global crises. Yes, be infuriated with Ukraine's invasion. No, don't allow yourself to be blinded into thinking we're politically involved because there's some sort of moral motivation. There can be like there can be geostrategic and moral motivation. It can be both. Like it's so weird. People have like the most one-dimensional view of like international crises. Like, there are probably countries that could use our help that don't represent as much of, like, a geostrategic interest, so there's not as much interest there in helping these people. That's true. And you can argue that, like, well, there should be more help for those people. But just because we're not helping every single person around the world that needs help, like, doesn't mean that we can't help anybody, especially people that are, that we would consider, like, allies. Didn't we have most people that BJ... G was rambling about anyway. Yeah, I don't know how much we, we it's possible too. People in the chat are saying we have helped people in Haiti and we've had we have helped even people in Pakistan, which might be true. I don't know. I don't know the extent of US involvement there. So that happened, 
begs the question, what do you mean by happen? Because when you are dealing with fundamental realities and yes. you pose a question, yes. you have to understand that mm -hmm. the reality of the concepts of your question, when you're mm -hmm. digging that deep, are just as questionable about as what you're questioning. You know, yeah. so people say to me, what do you, do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? <laughs> what do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? And yeah. you say as the questioner, well, we already know what all those things mean, yeah. except belief in God. And I think, no, if we're going to get down to the fundamental brass tacks, we don't really know what any of those things mean. Well, the question, did that happen, begs the question, what do you mean by happen? <laughs> Let me soy up, guys. Jesus. Yeah, hey, I uh, wanted to ask you a question. Well, you've come to the about, right place. Yeah, about abortion. Oh, God. F um, so when do you think it's wrong to abort fetuses? Um, as soon as they have the capacity to deploy a conscious experience. So it's about and when is that? I think it's like around the 20 to 24 week mark. Okay. And why do you why do you value that? Uh, well, because when we talk about like harming someone, that someone that we usually speak about is like the conscious experience of a person. When we look at when somebody's dead, it's usually when the conscious experience is abated. So it seems to make sense that when the person is alive, it's when the conscious experience has begun. And that's probably so you value their conscious about. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked. I talked with you a few weeks back about veganism. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm just wondering, what did, what kind of, con do you think the conscious experience of a little fetus is more valuable than, than like a full-grown pig or something? Yes, I think that humans have an exceptional conscious experience. Yeah. Well, humans, but what about the fetus, the 20-week-old fetus? Yeah. What's so special about the 20-week-old fetus's experience? It has a human conscious experience that is unique to humans. But what's the unique experience it's having? Um, I don't know, the level of sentience and cognition that we have it seems to be unique from any other animal, and it seems like humans are able to have that experience at around 20 to 24 weeks of age. You think the fetus at 20 weeks is having um, a, a more advanced conscious experience than a, like a, some full-grown mammal? Yep, than a full-grown mammal that will never even be able to learn how to use language? Yeah. What if the fetus would never learn to, to teach language? Uh, learning language is not a matter of just learning how to talk. It's the capacity to have all of the necessary, like, thoughts and thought patterns and things that exist inside, like, human experience that enables the capacity to learn language. Sure, and what if there, there's some f people that never have that? I, that's not, I don't think that's the case. I mean, unless you're talking like feral children or something. No, I'm talking about just regular, well, not regular people, but um, people that have uh, severe intellectual disability. Um, even people with severe intellectual disability, I think generally have the capacity for thought required to learn language. They might not be able to learn language for one reason or another. They might have like aphasia or something, but. No, I mean like they just, they, they do not have the, um, they, uh, they have like an IQ of less than like 60 or something. And their capacity to have the complexity of thought necessary to deploy language doesn't have to do your IQ. So these people who don't have, let's say they, they have a, they can't speak really cohesively or coherently, um, they have the capacity though for language? Um, they, there's like a whole bunch of like necessary preconditions that human brains seem to possess that allow us to like use complex things like language. Um, yeah, but they're not, they're not like exhibiting that. Sure, there, I, I'll, I'll grant you that there might be some very, very, very slim minority of the population that doesn't exhibit that, sure. Well, I mean, I, I don't even think a fetus exhibits that, right? Okay, I disagree. You think a fetus, well, I mean, like a fetus can't talk, right? It doesn't have one. No, it's it's not about being able to talk. It's that there's a complicated set of things that exist inside the human brain that allow us to use things like language. So being able to talk about things that don't exist, being able to talk in negatives, being able to talk about things in separate times, like we can conceptualize all of that. Um, and the ability of us to conceptualize that leads us to being able to use things like language. I don't think there's a single animal that can conceptualize these things. The sentient experience of humans seems to be on a different plane than every other animal that exists. Sure, I agree. Um, so you think the fetus has, because the fetus has the capacity for that, that's why it's wrong to abort it, more or less? 
um, once it begins to exhibit this experience, yes. Because when we talk about like avoiding the harm of humans, typically we're talking about avoiding like somebody that's having an experience, not just like a body. Well, what do you mean it exhibits it? Like, how does the fetus exhibit those experiences? Because at 20 to 24 weeks, all the necessary parts of the brain are formed and communicating with each other, and the parts that we believe are responsible for deploying conscious experience. I mean, sure, but I, like, I don't think it would, it would display as many traits of language as you could expect from, like, a pig. A pig right? cannot ever display a single trait necessary to use human language. It will no other animal can. Well, no, there are there are certain features of language that animals uh, display. No. They don't display all of them that humans have necessarily. There's none. There's no animal that we know of that has a language. There are some that no, can use... No, no, I mean the feet of like a feature of language, right? I don't know what you so mean like, by feature. If you mean like utter a sound and create a Pavlovian response to it, sure, but I, I, this isn't what I mean when I say language. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying the fetus, I don't think either a fetus has all of these components for language. Or, and I also think that uh, some animals actually do have more than the fetus. Okay. Uh, well, when you can prove that to me, I'll be interested in... Well, well okay. Well, how, how do you want me to prove that to you? I don't know. I, I, my understanding is that there are these a priori conditions that exist inside of a human's brain that allows us to conceptualize things that are necessary preconditions for using language in the sophisticated manner that we do. Pigs never display this or have this. Fetuses at around 20 to 24 weeks begin to exhibit a human conscious experience. The parts of the brain necessary that contain the same things that we need for language to be possible have begun to form and are now communicating with one another inside of a fetus's brain at 20 to 24 weeks. Well, yeah, so they can have the parts of the brain required for that, but they won't, they won't necessarily be exhibiting that, right? Like people with severe, like uh, intellectual disability, right? They, they, no, I don't think severe, they... I don't know what you think severe intellectual disability means. It doesn't mean you're not human. You don't have a human. People with Down no, syndrome no. can use language, right? Well, yeah, because you were, human. you were saying that you value the, um, they're exhibiting the, the features of language. And, um, well, I don't think fet fetuses exhibit, they might have the necessary components required to exhibit it, but they won't, they aren't exhibiting it, right? Like they don't- I think they're having like, a, they're having a human conscious experience at around 20 to 24 weeks. Well, okay, well, I asked you this before, but so what do you mean by human conscious experience? As in the sophisticated conscious experience that humans have when the parts of our brain have formed and are communicating with one another, that begins to happen at around 20 to 24 weeks. Yeah, it's just I mean, that sounded like you just restated. Because I, I don't know how else to say it. You're trying to like, you're trying, you're, you're desperately trying to nail me down on like, well, what is no, the IQ of a down. fetus? Yeah, I think what I'm saying is like very clear, very easy to understand. But you're trying to do the thing where it's like, what's a bar that's so low that not every human could pass above it, but a pig or a cow could. You're like desperately trying to like, we, like well, yeah. squirm around that. Art. Yeah, but that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that the human conscious experience is markedly different than an animal's yeah, conscious experience. I don't that, disagree. Yeah, no, no, you do though, because you're trying to say, well, what about like really fucking retarded people? That's not, that's well, not, that. That people, humans with mental disabilities do not lack like a human conscious experience. They don't suddenly have the conscious experience of like a pig or a cow. It's it's a markedly fundamentally different thing. But but you yeah, keep, I mean, yeah, but not... you're like saying like what is like the IQ of a fetus? I don't know what the IQ of a fetus is, but I know that's not relevant to what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, because you're talking about language specifically. So wait, wait, when I say I... language, what do I mean by that? Well, actually, I'm not not quite sure. What, what do you mean by that? You okay, say? let me say it again. When I say language, what I mean is that a priori, human minds are capable of conceiving of things that, to my understanding, no animal mind is capable of conceiving of. So, for instance, conceiving of like a negative. Like, I can tell a human there is no book in the other room. The concept for that is something that no mind seems to be able to exhibit. And because of all these things that a priori human brains just seem to have genetically gifted to them, we're able to use language to communicate ideas that no animal can communicate because they, they don't even have these ideas. It's not about being able to speak. When I say language, I don't mean being able to utter sounds and then have like some syntactic association with them. Like, oh, the dog barked, there's prey over there. I mean, being able to have concepts in our mind that are able to, we're able to communicate things in like time and space that no other animal is able to do. That's what I'm talking about. Can I, can I ask Destiny a question? No, but let this guy finish quickly. first before we do like the 15 hours of being, just let this guy no, finish I'm his agree, train of thought. I agree with him and I think he's not asking the right question. Okay, go ahead, ask, ask a question. Okay, um, 
like for example, someone who like a feral child who's born yeah, in a, a, infinitely society. Holocaust all of them. If you're gonna create like the example of like the human being that is missing for the zero point zero 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 one percent, it is more it is more ideologically consistent to say like, okay, fine, Sorry. then you can infinitely Holocaust feral children. Then holy shit, we're gonna open the door to say that all of cows and pigs and all these other animals are having a conscious experience that's similar yes. enough to a human being that they're gonna get moral consideration. No, no, not similar enough. Hold on, not similar enough because I agree with you that human beings eventually, of course, develop something that is very distinctive but under the age of let's say two years old it's very much an open question whether they have cognitive abilities that are more sophisticated than anything like you know uh, like a, a primate or even things like birds i don't know if cognitive um, abilities like ability to like memorize and repeat patterns or seeing oneself in a mirror is the same as like the a priori genetic gifts to us to have a yes, higher but, yeah i don't know like if a baby's conscious a experience priori genetic gifts i i'm not entirely sure with that like the brain will develop and function so as to give rise to the capacity to understand like complex mental states and understand the distinction between words. Okay, and if you if you want to link me a paper about that and then demonstrate it, then fine. Then maybe the abortion age goes up to like two years old. Uh, well, demonstrate what? Just so that we're clear. That like babies don't have conscious experiences like adults do. Well, no, but this is the thing is they have experiences, but the, like there's no reason to ascribe to them a type of experience that is also different from say a chimpanzee i mean the behavior is almost identical behavior um, is not what we're talking about it's what the it's the semantic understanding of we, the mind hold on. but we can only get access uh, to a theory of mind by looking at behavior right like the only way that i can understand sure. okay like, but if you want to say hold on no 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 no, no. hold on hold on wait wait, wait. No, no, no 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 stop okay when you say we can only get access to the state of mind by looking at behavior, we've done that across the animal kingdom, and they don't, none of them seem to have the semantic understanding that humans do. So the question isn't looking at animal behavior. The question is looking at, the, qu the question is looking at babies' behavior, right? But I don't know okay, if we yeah. can understand, if we can assess their theory of mind when they lack the ability to communicate. Right. We well, know I, no, I think even wait, I think even full grown humans lack those characteristics that you would no. you would not see in, in, in the animal kingdom. No, because I can talk to a fully grown human and they can communicate things like. In no, I'm not talking about like a regular full grown human. I'm talking about a regular human that has severe intellectual disability. Okay. No, I, that you, that, you wouldn't be able to talk a, to them. You wouldn't be able to talk to them. Okay. They would have such a low, um, you know, verbal IQ, let's say mm -hmm. that they, you know, they wouldn't be able to communicate these things with you. These things that you say you value. Gotcha. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm just yeah. saying. It's true. Like there are there are people with completely, you know, profound intellectual disability, and they don't have mm -hmm. these criteria. I think that you're saying that you value. Like they, you wouldn't be able to communicate them about language. You wouldn't be able to com uh, communicate about like concepts of language or any any of these things. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I disagree with that. Uh, but I, for example, like uh, under the age of two years old like infants do not exhibit any evidence of semantic understanding absolutely nothing more than you know full-grown apes do like we we develop this by looking at joint attention and the way that babies uh interact with their mothers in with objects in the environment because that's the only way we could really because babies are not having they don't understand the difference between something appearing to be the case and something actually being the case which is what is required to have a semantic understanding which is mapping you know, words to the world. But that only arises at, at minimum after the age of two years old. Okay, you're and gonna so board a babies up to two years old then, okay? Oh, okay, so, okay. Well, so okay. I, I just wanna be clear if that's what- Yep, if that's, that's my what... base new position, thank you. Okay, okay, all right. I just wanted to clarify, okay, okay. all right, bye. Okay, anything else? Um, well, I mean, I don't think that actually is your position, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure, it can be. Okay. Well, the point I was just trying to make was that you said, you know, if we observe the behaviors of the animals in the, in the animal kingdom, we, would, we don't see these, like, features of language. But there's plenty of people that we value that just don't have these features of language just because they're, they're, they're brain developed in, in such a way that they're incredibly intellectually dis uh, disabled, right? I mean, I, I, we're never going to agree on the dis disabled part. I think vegans' understandings of like mental disability is like one of the most laughably stupid fucking things I've ever heard in my entire life. Like when I talk to you, vegans and they talk about mental disability, they seem to think that like humans that are mentally disabled are, are like living in a totally different fucking reality. That they're completely inhuman like creatures that have no understanding of what's like. I, I, don't, I don't know what you think a mental disability. No, is. I mean there might be some mental disabilities that are so fucking insanely low, but you're talking about a one percent of a one percent of a one percent of a one percent. Like no normal 
normal mental, even severe mental disabilities don't even approach what you're talking about. Do you understand that? Like Down syndrome well, don't even approach what you're saying. I didn't say I was talking about like any, like just like someone with Down syndrome or something. I'm, okay, uh, so yeah, I, I there might be, there's, you, I could conceive of some level of mental disability where somebody's had like three fourths of their brain destroyed or something. Where like, yeah, I guess this person isn't having a human conscious experience anymore. Sure, I can conceive. Well, their that. brain doesn't need to be destroyed. It just didn't develop properly, let's okay, say. Okay, sure, right? like, or somebody whose brain didn't develop. Sure, I can conceive of there's like a 1% of a 1% of a 1%, sure. Well, there's good, there's like, a, there's actually classifications of this, of intellectual disability and there's actual numbers um, about it and I think uh, yeah, yeah. Like I think the 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 the, the absolute number came to around like uh, like seven or like eight million people worldwide have uh, an IQ like less than or equal to thirty five or something. Okay. And they need like constant support and everything. And uh, uh, they, I think they have a profound. Lack. They, I don't think it would demonstrate any of the features of language that you th you think you value. Gotcha. Genocide. But, that's my position. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, it seems like you, you, you sort of applied the vegan argument when you go when you when you talk to people about abortion, though. Uh, no, I don't. Not at all. Well, I mean, you, you talk about how you value sentience and everything. Uh, no. I well, you talk don't... about how I value the capacity to deploy a human conscious experience. That's very specifically what's being talked about. Sure. Okay. But if you want to say that like it's all consciousness, then you, then technically I'm making a I'm making a vegan argument for every single time I talk about consciousness. So that's how you hear it, right? Like, should no. we pull the plug on this person? Well, he's in a coma forever and he's brain dead. There's actually no brain activity whatsoever. So yeah, we should probably pull the plug. Wow, that's a vegan argument. You're saying you value brain activity, so you value consciousness. You value v like you should value all animal consciousness. No, that's not true. When I'm talking about human sentience, I'm talking about human sentience. I'm not making broad arguments for sentience all yeah. like day. I just it's just a way a vegan would go about arguing about it well because vegans value just all sentience or all conscious experiences well, i mean we don't have like, all conscious experiences like, okay some do okay um yeah i don't know i think if you if you observe the animal kingdom you'd see types of behaviors that you would value and i'm not sure why you why you think you don't i don't know why you, also why the emphasis was on language specifically right, let's see what why you care so much about language and like specific features of language it's not it's not language it's that the way that we interact with language shows that we have like a greater like semantic understanding of the world that like far exceeds any other animal in existence. It's not that we can just, it's not that we have a language, it's the fact that we can even use one to communicate the ideas that we do. Okay, what do you think about like dolphins or, or elephants? Um, what about them? They're like pretty intelligent as far as animals go. Yeah, but like uh, some people would think that, uh, or even people who aren't vegans, uh, consider them uh, to have uh, a high, high enough, let's say, conscious experience that they're that would be immoral to kill them, right? Uh, I, I guess if you're dumb. Sure. Do you disagree with that? Yeah, Do of course. Think? There's no reason to think that. All right. I'm gonna eat all the dolphins I can just because we have this conversation. <laughs> okay. All right. That's great. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thanks for the conversation. I love you, buddy. Okay. Love you too. Bye. See ya. Hey, what's up? You wanna talk about veganism? Oh, uh, yeah, no, totally. Uh, I love veganism. I, I, I vegan all day, Based. bro. Okay, what's up? What do you want from me? Um, well, I that was a really interesting conversation. A little bit autistic, I'm not gonna lie, but okay, it wasn't autistic. He was fine. What do you want? Uh, I was gonna ask you. Well, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about the North Korea shit? Have you talked about it yet? Um, which North Korea shit? Uh, they just recently fired like 10 missiles, uh, oh, over Japan so or whatever. It wasn't that a while ago. No, South Korea. Oh, over South Korea. Damn. That's pretty fucked, yeah. yo. Things are heating up. Not BTS cool, dude. War. No, super cringe. And, uh, not base. We're about, to, we're about to lose the BTS boys to war and it's going to be super sad. Wow. Uh, okay. Fortunately though, my, my favorite, uh, Korean heartthrob John Cook is like 49 and he I don't think he can go into the military anymore. Oh, well, at least you'll be safe then. Okay, what's up? Do you uh, have do a real you... question for me? What? Oh, I was just going to ask you like do you think uh do you think this is going to like ramp up a lot? Uh, I have no idea. Doesn't North Korea always do this back and forth with like flirting with testing their weapon systems out and everything? I mean, yeah, but I feel like things have like kind of gotten a, a little bit more like frequent and extreme recently. Um, yeah, all across the world, we do seem to be having that going on. Yeah. Uh, I just like, do you, 
how much longer can this go on, do you think? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Good question. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, fuck Steven. <laughs> what am I supposed to predict world politics? I'm not sure. Who yeah, the you're the big streamer man. You're There's probably a lot my that's like writing on like the outcome of this like Ukrainian fucking war, I would imagine. Like if, if Ukraine wins and Russia's forced to like chill and you know suck their own dick for a while, they're probably probably a good thing for cooling off temperatures around the world. If Russia wins, it's probably bad. But who knows? Maybe Russia losing actually motivates, you know, North Korea to push even further for a nuclear missile. I don't know what our diplomatic channels with North Korea look like right now, so That's fair. That's fair. Um you heard about Takeoff, right? Um, I don't even know who he is. I know he's a rapper and he died, but... Yeah, he got shot in a, in a dice gambling thing. That's a pretty black thing to sound... I don't know any... That sounds Wait. pretty horrible, but yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's pretty sad. Yeah, um, it sounds sad. I feel like I watched a Dave Chappelle skit on this, but yeah. Our, our favorite... Uh... <laughs> Our favorite person in the world, Hassan, he uh, he used this as an avenue to talk about uh, anti-gun laws. That's an um, interesting um, avenue to take, but okay. Oh yeah, uh, a, a lot of people didn't really like it very much. Um, um, I, I, I okay. Was it just somebody trying to like rob the dice game, or? Uh no. What happened was uh, basically, I, I don't even think like takeoff apparently wasn't even doing anything. I don't even think he was like meant to be shot at. Um, one of the guys, uh, apparently, there are some mob people there. Okay. And uh, one of the guys there, uh, it, the mob person just rubbed him the wrong way, so he kind of started some shit, and uh, things just kind of popped off. And I think takeoff was just a casualty, you know. Oh well, that's pretty fucked. That sucks. Yeah, no, it's fucking awful. Um. So abortion. <laughs> I actually uh, I have a hot take for you. Oh, uh, I want to get your thoughts on it. Yes. Um, I'm I'm gonna give you a, a certified hood classic. Uh, I think uh, I think all abortion is is pretty much murder. Um, okay. Wow. However. Yeah. yeah. It should. Be I have okay. a, I have super schizo. Yeah. No, it should be okay. I agree. Why? I think uh, there's forms of murder that we as a society are okay with, and. Uh, I think we need to come to terms with that. At times, we are just immoral. That's that's totally not a good argument for anything. But okay. Wait, well, what do you mean? Come on, come on. We can't. You can't accept immorality. Immorality, by definition, is things that we should push against. We accept all kinds of immorality all the time. Like what? I don't know. You fucking. Uh, sometimes I'll like tell a little white lie to to fuck with somebody, and then I'm just like, oh, I'm just kidding, you know. Yeah, but don't by definition don't we say lying is bad? Shouldn't we ought not do yeah. that? Uh, if there's I mean, no point yeah, to any morality, if we just say that we can accept that we can be immoral, then there's no is point. Is drinking Coca-Cola bad? Not bad in a moral sense. It's bad for your health. Okay. Okay. Is disliking somebody bad in a moral sense? No. Are you? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Why would it be bad in a moral sense? Because you harbor, like, uh, a bunch of hatred, and it's just like, uh, I don't say know. harboring hatred might not be virtuous, but I don't know if hating someone would be considered morally bad. Okay, well, what's what would you say is the difference between, like, virtue and mor morality? <sighs> well, it's a different... I'm not sure. Damn, dude. I, it's going to depend on the moral system. A Christian might say that, like, hating someone is, like, bad, but I don't know if most people think that hating someone is bad. It's, that's going to depend on, like, your particular flavor of either religion or ethics, right? I guess so. But, I mean, I, I feel like we do bad things all the time. Yeah, but, and, uh, but doing bad things, we avoid, we try to avoid doing bad things, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we do. I mean, and I guess, like, but we still do bad things, right? And these bad things aren't necessarily legal. We, we do them. And I feel like us as a society have, has accepted, like, abortion as an acceptable thing, well, except in certain states, you know what I mean? Okay, well listen, your take, your theory is noted, okay? We'll keep that in mind. That sometimes <laughs> well, maybe well, we can I... just do bad things, okay? <laughs> Let's say I wanted to break into your house and steal all your shit right now, okay? And then you would say, yeah. don't do that. And I go, well, sometimes we do bad things. Is that an acceptable answer? Uh, no, that's not an acceptable answer. Why? However, that's also not accepted by society. So it's, so, okay, so then was slavery okay, since that was accepted by society? 
I mean, at the time it was. Not today, though. And certainly not in my mind. Okay, how do we ever change morals or change things if we just say that we're just going to stick with whatever is accepted by society? Uh, we make social progress, right? Well, how do, where does the progress come from? Why would you progress if everything is okay as long as society accepts it? Well, I mean, just because society accepts it doesn't mean it's okay. Like, I feel like all, like, progress in society is pushed by individuals, right? And yeah, like, but if somebody was pushing, you would just be like, well, why are you pushing? Like, since we're all saying it's okay, it's okay, don't push. Well, we still push. I mean, that's what we do, right? <laughs> I, I... Okay, final thoughts. Give us your final thoughts on this. Before I okay. go... Yeah. Final thoughts, okay? I think, uh, with abortion, the essential goal is the same thing as if you were, like, to kill a baby. It, it may not be, like, definitionally the same thing as murder. However, in your heart of hearts, in the heart of the cards, it, I mean, you know, you kind of just like, all right, this is what I'm doing. But I feel like that's okay. I feel like we commit murder every day. Uh, you know, whatever, fucking smash a bucks. Like, that's an acceptable form of murder. And I know you're probably going to hit me with the Oxford Dictionary. Oh, no, human. But fuck off. Okay. But, like, it's just something um, that we as a society find acceptable. And I think that is good because, uh, man, I'm pro choice. Not two years pro-choice. I'm sorry, you're insane, Steven. Well, that's okay, right? Because we just, sometimes we do bad things, right? Steven, come on. Don't, don't be this way. Okay, I love you, buddy. I love you, too. Be careful. All right, bye. bye. I'm not a really big meaner. Memer. He misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're so what a fucking oh idiot. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't Yikes. believe it. Oh, he left on his own, too. Yeah. What a f***ing idiot. Yeah, good. <laughs> Jesus uh, We're all gonna die.